Good evening. This is Friday, October 24th, 11 days until the 2008 presidential election. While one woman associated with the McCain campaign is tonight facing criminal charges for a fraudulent accusation of a sexual and racial attack by an imaginary Obama supporter. In our fifth story in the countdown, another woman associated with the McCain campaign gave her first policy speech today, just eight weeks into her candidacy. She is tonight facing scrutiny over why she ridiculed productive research into the very subject she claims to be personally devoted to, children with special needs. The McCain campaign headquarters apparently not a happy place to be these days. Politico.com reporting that senior McCain aides are pointing fingers, placing blame, and sending out resumes said to be a breach of custom no, how badly, no matter how badly a campaign is doing. Part of what McCain aides are said to be fighting over, Mark Ambinder of The Atlantic reporting that a faction within the campaign believes the running mate, whether unwittingly, subconsciously, or otherwise, has been playing Senator McCain off the conservative base, telling that base that Senator Obama has been supposedly palling around with terrorists without the approval of McCain campaign headquarters. McCain's chief foreign policy advisor, Randy Schuneman, attempting to refute that contention in an email to Mr. Ambinder, writing, quote, just read your post, this is on the record, this is cleared by HQ, it is a fact that Barack Obama was palling around with terrorists, it was a fact before Governor Palin said it in a fully vetted speech, and it is fact today, it is bull blank to claim or write anything else. So says the man who backed Ahmed Chalabi, the Iraqi exile who helped feed false intelligence about Saddam Hussein's WMD that never were. It was against this backdrop today that Governor Palin 2.0 made her debut. The governor pledging that despite Senator McCain's promise of a spending freeze on everything except health care, the military, veterans programs, and entitlement spending, some more exceptions have followed as well, that despite Senator McCain's record of having voted against increased funding for the Americans with Disabilities Act at least 18 times, a McCain-Palin administration administration would shift billions of dollars to programs for children with special needs, children like her infant son, Trigg. And in a McCain-Palin administration, we're going to put the educational choices for special needs children in the right hands, in the hands of the parents and the good responsible caretakers. Under reforms that I will lead as vice president, the parents and caretakers of children with physical or mental disabilities will be able to send that boy or girl to the school of their choice, public or private. In a McCain-Palin administration, we'll also fully fund the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act. Finally, it will be fully funded. Where would they get that money? Why? It will be redirected from the dreaded earmarks, of course, like her bridge to nowhere. You've heard about the bridges, and you've heard about um, these, some of these pet projects that really don't make a whole lot of sense. And sometimes these dollars, they go to projects having little or nothing to do with the public good. Things like fruit fly research in Paris, France. I kid you not. Except there's nothing to kid about in the work being done at the University of North Carolina, which is not in France, where by studying fruit flies, researchers have discovered that a certain protein is required for nerve cell functions to form and function properly, a discovery that may lead to advances in understanding autism. But Governor Palin's first policy speech just happened to fall on the same day she and her husband Todd also gave depositions in that second investigation into her firing of Alaska's top public safety official, Pure coincidence. She and her husband testifying in St. Louis, the so-called Trooper Gate investigation, into whether she abused her powers by firing the public safety commissioner after trying to get her former brother-in-law kicked off the force. Senator Obama, meanwhile, spending this day in Hawaii at the apartment of his 85-year-old grandmother, Madeline Dunham, a woman he calls Toot, Hawaiian for grandparent. The senator's wife, Michelle Obama, taking his place on the campaign trail in Ohio, updating the crowd on the health of Mrs. Dunham. She's tough. Her birthday is on Sunday. And, um, and he said that, you know, because I always asked Barack through this year, I was like, how are you doing this? You are tough. And he said the other night, he said, you know, I got my toughness from two, you know, um, because uh, she, she taught him with her quiet confidence and that love and support uh, that he could do anything, just deep love and admiration. Um, so... On behalf of Barack um, and Malia and Sasha and all of our family, we just want to thank all of the supporters, and not just folks who have been supporting this campaign, but people who have sent well wishes and good wishes and prayers. It means so much to us, and I just want to thank you for that. Time now to call in our own Richard Wolf, also, of course, senior White House correspondent for Newsweek magazine. Richard, good evening. Good evening, Keith. All right, how could they let Governor Palin go out 
and mock research that has identified a genetic indicator for autism? Who was stupid or insensitive enough to let that happen? Keith, I'm going to be as restrained and measured as I possibly can about this, but th this is the most mindless, ignorant, uninformed comment that we have seen from Governor Palin so far, and, and there's been a lot of competition for that prize. Um, fruit flies aren't just to do with this kind of research. They are a standard scientific model in genetic research, along with a whole range of other organisms and cells, uh, including mice, rats. I mean, there's nothing fluffy or funny about it. It's scientific research. And if you deliver your first serious policy speech and you make this kind of basic error, you either don't have a scientific advisor or you don't have a speechwriter who knows what they're saying. Plus, uh, we switched over from dinosaurs to fruit flies many, many years ago. This, the governor should have known about that. Uh, the the, uh, the, the much-hyped McCain spending freeze comes back into the picture because of what Governor Palin said today. It left out, to begin with, defense, uh, veterans programs, health care, entitlements. Uh, then they added NASA and science uh, spending uh, worker retraining. Today she adds special needs education. When is this definitionally a, no longer a spending freeze of any kind? Well, unless you deal with defense and entitlements, you're, you're ruling out such a vast proportion of the federal budget that it becomes kind of meaningless. Uh, I mean, it's politically effective. I, I don't think there's any question that the whole earmark battle has actually been a, a reasonably good one for, for McCain. But not only the exemptions, but it, it, the basic strategy just doesn't speak to the economic crisis. So uh, spending freeze or not, people are still going to be worried about their jobs and their homes. The, uh, the report that we had in here from The Atlantic, is there in fact any kind of divide between McCain and Palin? Is it a little? Is it nothing? What's going on? You know, I've spoken to a number of Republicans, and, uh, and there are conflicting um, theories about this. I think that the really significant thing is that those suspicions are even out there, because it's poisonous at this point of a campaign, just as the, the finger-pointing and blame game that's already developed among staffers is poisonous. The idea that anyone in this campaign has a different agenda is, is corrosive. The Dow Jones uh, dropped 312 more points today. The median home price is out. It's dropped $191. Uh, it feels like $191. $191,000. It's down 9% from a year ago. Do those two numbers pretty much tell us what the campaign is going to be about next week as we hit uh, the finish line? Well, it certainly suggests that there's no breathing space here for the McCain campaign. If they thought that the economic news would somehow shift uh, a a and save them in time, give them a breathing space, it's not going to happen. A and remember that we're only just at the point here, this is the sort of market's response, but the real economy, the pain of the real economy has yet to kick in. So th these are the sort of leading indicators here. We haven't seen the sharp spike in unemployment that uh, a lot of people are predicting. And do we have anything out of Obama HQ with these reports about early voting being um, heavy and heavily in his favor? Well, they're feeling very positive about that, but these are rough measures, and, and their big problem here is about complacency, uh, about people thinking that this is a done deal. Uh, they don't know where the early voting is. There are rough guides about age and party affiliation, but um, too, too early for them to celebrate by any means. Richard Wolf uh, in Cleveland uh, for us tonight from uh, Newsweek and MSNBC with uh, some pointed commentary that I congratulate you on, sir, at the beginning of our, our conversation. Great, thanks. Safe travels. Have a good weekend. Thanks, Keith.